National Grid Grain LNG is the first truly commercial LNG terminal in the country. As one of four strategically located sites of its type, it plays an important role in securing the UK's gas supply. Britain is the second largest consumer of gas in Europe, relying heavily on imports of LNG. National Grid Grain LNG imports LNG into the UK here at Grain. We import LNG, which is liquefied natural gas, which is a uh, gas stored at minus 160 degrees C, and uh, cleverly uh, it reduces in volume by 600 times. That 600 times less volume means that it's very easily transportable fuel from all the different countries around the world, pushing LNG into the UK here. Importing and storing liquefied natural gas brings new demands on port infrastructures like National Grid LNG at Grain. As vessel sizes are on the increase, docking, mooring and fendering equipment and systems need to adapt to meet these new berthing challenges. LNG port facilities are now faced with supporting the berth of larger LNG vessels of up to 266,000 cubic metres capacity and discharging or loading contents to and from these ships efficiently and safely. Well, National Grid had a site here for a long time, since 1980. We converted a peak shave LNG terminal into an import terminal in 2005. That was our first ship ever to come into the UK. It's the first of the modern LNG terminals in the UK as well. That was our first jetty. Our second jetty was uh, commissioned in 2010, again using trail ball equipment. The reason for importing LNG into the UK is really focused on the declining um, amount of supply from UK continental shelf. So that, that gas supply is uh, dwindling and LNG is making up the shortfall for that. So you have this installation here is really meeting the UK's demand, keeping UK PLC working. The construction and upgrade of the jetties at the National Grid Grain LNG facility needed bespoke products that would help to support bigger vessel types such as the world's largest, the Cumax, and improved production rates at the plant. For LNG Jetty 8, Trelleborg Marine Systems was contracted by Volker Steven Construction International to supply all mooring and fendering products and worked with main contractor CB&I in the design and supply of docking aids and environmental and integrated monitoring systems for the project. Products supplied by Trelleborg included a range of quick release hooks to support different tonnage, on hook smart hook load monitoring systems and remote release, a smart dock docking aid system, and central integration of the marine monitoring system. Trelleborg also supplied five SCN 2000 super cone fenders that would accommodate for the heavy impacts of the large vessel sizes expected at Isle of Grain. So our, our, our marine operation here at uh, Grain LNG means that uh, ships come down the Medway estuary with four tugs. Those tugs are controlled by Medway ports. Um, we bring the ship alongside to us at our jetties. Um, what Jetty 8 has given us is the capacity to offload these very large ships, these 266,000, 65,000 QMAX ships, uh, pushing large quantities of LNG safely and efficiently from that vessel down into our tanks here at Grain. Tugboats guide the LNG vessel towards the jetty where the pilot receives feedback of vessel speed, distance to jetty and angle from the smart dock display board. This helps ensure the vessel docks within the jetty and fender design criteria. Mooring lines are then lowered and a line boat assists in transferring the lead line, a smaller rope attached to each mooring line, to the mooring personnel at each quick release hook location. The lead line is wrapped around the capstan to haul in the mooring line and then the eye of each mooring line is attached to its own quick release hook. Super cone fenders take the impact of the ship as it makes its first contact with the jetty. The mooring lines are winched in from the ship and a known pretension is established to optimise the mooring configuration. The mooring lines hold the ship in place against the jetty in a fixed position. The loading arms are attached and the LNG can then be discharged from the ship. In order to support the largest capacity vessels, 
Work on Jetty 8 included the demolition of the existing jetty and the design and construction of a replacement, including approach trestles, jetty head, and the mooring and breasting dolphins. Jetty 10 was a new construction consisting of a deep water jetty with a long approach trestle for the maintenance roadway and the LNG pipelines from the shallow areas to deep water. Both jetties were also connected by a steel walkway. Trelleborg's integrated monitoring systems display essential data to ensure the vessel remains safely moored at the jetty throughout the unloading process. And when ready for departure, the lines can be released remotely from the control room and monitored via programs. National Grid have a team of um, trained technicians to calibrate and maintain all the hooks that Trailball supplied us across our jetties. The Trailball provided some very good after sale service around 2010 when we were first commissioning Jetty 8. We had a, a very busy commissioning schedule and Trailball helped us with some calibration of our hooks. Ships were pretty much on the horizon coming towards us and we, we had to get these hooks commissioned in time. Trouble sent people across to the UK to help us with that commissioning. And in fact, we sent people to Australia to, to really get down to the nuts and bolts of how things worked here. We've seen a, a lot of trailborg here where we needed them. And if we just pick up the phone, they're there ready and able to, to listen to us. The National Grid Isle of Grain Terminal is a state-of-the-art port that required the highest quality in bespoke products as part of an integrated solution. Find out how Trelleborg Marine Systems could help your project, whether an LNG facility or other type of port or harbour environment.